are we? It's just, this, is, this, is, this is a Twilight. How long have we been? 17. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> That's my... We've been reading Twilight. Yeah, it's, um, it's a fantastic work of literature. Eli, Eli reads to me at night to help me fall asleep because I, I struggle to fall asleep. And so um, Eli's been reading Twilight. Yes. And um, big, big fans of the movies. Oh, love the movies. I love. We, we Absol- have watched them. Probably. So many times. Uh, more than a dozen times. We watch them at least once a year. We have them all on Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. But I have not ever read the books. No. You have. Yeah. When they came out. Oh, yeah. Like in high school. Yeah. And, but anyway. So and I'm reading them for the first time. So for the first time, you are being exposed to the absolute despicable, despicable toxic yep. douchebaggery yep. that is edward cullen oh i thought we were talking about bella <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely like um he's he's awful in the movies i mean i did not realize he could be worse yeah yeah he gets a lot worse like yes. it's like and and now we have to read the book i have not read where it's all of his inner monologue oh so yeah. i can't yeah, wait yeah, yeah. to see what the justification is for all of the terrible right. things that he says to Bella. I, I said this the other day, and now that it's in a public space, I'm going to say it here, and you all can let me know how correct I am. Um, drop a vampire emoji if I'm right. Uh, <laughs> and a wolf if I'm wrong. Uh, I swear. So, Midnight Sun, I remember it got leaked, or part of it got leaked, like, years ago. Oh, yeah. W- like, like, right after Breaking Dawn came Yeah, out. it was, yeah. I am convinced that because in that period of like five or six years that the books were coming out and the movies just started coming out, I am convinced that Stephanie Meyer was like, there was so much discourse around how toxic their relationship was and Mm -hmm. how awful Edward was. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that she felt the need to justify his actions. Which is just And that's why she wrote them. I don't know. I don't know. I know, but isn't that just like... The whitest, medio- mediocreist like, <laughs> guy thing to do. Like... Yeah, like... No, no, no. You no. don't... You have, let me let me explain to you why I'm such an asshole Like, I'm you. not going to apologize. No. No, of course not. But it is completely justified that, that I, I treated you that like That I shit. treat you like absolute garbage. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. I haven't read Midnight Sun. I haven't either. So... And I've never read any interviews with her regarding why she wrote it. No. But I get the feeling. I'm like, after reading this... And knowing that that discourse was going on, I'm like, she did this as a defense of him. Is it, though? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I'm I don't just know. like, I... Well, because your sister's reading it, and your sister is saying, once you read his side of it, it makes more sense. It is and true. I'm, I'm like, and I'm like... Mm, I don't know about that. I highly doubt that. Yeah. I highly doubt that I'm ever going to take Edward's side, no. <laughs> because... Well, no, because obviously Jacob's better. Jacob's better. Like... I mean, Jacob has some issues too, though. Uh, sure, okay, but I mean, honestly, he's... just the display of romance in America in general, and yeah. the, in in American media in general, is just mm-hmm. truly a garbage fire. Yeah, it's just a garbage fire. It it is. I and mean... thankfully, that's why there's no romance in the movie that we're talking about today. I you brought it back around because I, I I was pretty sure that you were trying to bring up the bedtime story thing to 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 segue into this. Nope. But, okay. Nope. I, I, I didn't. So today we're actually talking about two uh, movies. Two. They're, they're both It's short a double films. feature. Double feature. They're both short films. They're both... Oh, and Happy Halloween? Uh, yeah, to, if this goes up when next you, Sunday. When you think it's going to go up. Then the, it, tomorrow is Halloween and Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween! Uh, these both are on archive.org. They're both very short. They're like 20 minutes or less. You should definitely watch these for Halloween. They're great. They're great. I'm just gonna. I'm sorry. I just spoiled everything by saying that they're great up front. They're great. No, they are. They're great. Um, and I honestly feel like you would do yourself a disservice to not watch both of them. Uh, yes. So that is uh, that. That's a good jumping off point for talking about what we're actually talking about. <laughs> we're really good at that. We, we really are. Um, so we are talking about the. Two different adaptations of the short story, uh, The Restaurant of Many Orders, by Kenji Miyazawa. He's the one who wrote the original short story. And he, um, I don't know about in Japan, but at least in uh, the English-speaking world, he is most well-known for writing Night on the Galactic Railroad, which was adapted into an animated film, which we actually have not seen nor covered. 
Um, but it's, it's on our list, though. It's I mean, it's some it's some eighties furry anime stuff. Oh so, yeah, no, I like, I yeah, I distinctly we, knew exactly what you were talking about. So we're definitely probably going to cover that next week. Uh, but <laughs> so this is a short story, uh, which frequently when I was doing research about it, I was finding it listed as a children's short story, which I don't know where that distinction comes from necessarily i don't know if like that was his intent or if it was interpreted that way okay I don't so know. like i feel like things that are labeled as children's short stories and this is just me like making an, an assumption i don't actually yeah. know yeah but my thought on that is it's like the whole aesop's fables thing that it's a children's yeah. short story if there is a moral yeah. yeah like if it's a morality tale yeah yeah like there's a moral dilemma or yeah. there's like a moral like this is why you don't do the thing or this is why sure. i always do the thing sure you know i feel like that is when it becomes a children's story but i don't i don't that's know fair. like fair. that but that's just the sense that i get right right so these are both animated films, um, and we also, uh, in preparation, read the short story uh, itself. It Not is, in Japanese. It is available, translated into English, online for free by, like, it's. it, it was published as an excerpt of a translated uh, collection of his short stories. So you can legally read it for free. I will link it. It's good. Yeah, um, it is good. So uh the but maybe watch the movies first maybe well okay yeah because i want to get into that because these are these are very different adaptations very different so the two that we're talking about are the it's either 1991 or 1993 it is it is kind of all over the place (laughs) when this movie was actually released uh let's just let's just say 1992 (laughs) okay and the 2003 version uh, the so let's 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 do it in order. Okay, so the nineteen ninety mm, version l- 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 <laughs> was originally uh, worked on by the director uh, Tadanari Okamoto, uh, who it's it appears throughout his career did a bunch of different uh, short films in a bunch of different media, um, like mostly animated, but from what i'm understanding pretty experimental in a lot of ways not like following the trends of his time of the 60s 70s 80s mm. of just of doing like um quote unquote anime like the yeah. the proto like anime style yeah you, you know what i'm saying this definitely felt experimental in that way yeah that the, this particular one reminded me of that other movie we did about the aliens yes uh violence voyager yeah I think it was called it totally yes. reminded me of that yes. like that hand-drawn like absolutely but it was also like like old disney like yes. uh like yes. bambi and yes. like the way the backgrounds were and everything mm-hmm. and what else old disney looked like that honestly just that like kind of like painterly mm-hmm there's something else there, that does that. I, Maybe yeah. Fox and the Hound or some. Yeah, I can't. I, I know. Think of I know it. what you're talking but about. But it's though. like this painterly style right. where like every single frame is different. Mm-hmm. So it like is constantly like moving and jiggling and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Yes. It's uh, so cool. There was also the one. Oh God, what was that called? There was the one that we covered a couple of years ago that took like ten years to make, mm. and a lot of it was that one sequence. Yeah, that, you remember it was it was the one about the band. Um, I can't remember what it was called. Our sound. Yes, that was it. Yeah, All right, it's kind of kind of like that too, where mm-hmm. it's like all squiggly and yeah. jiggly. Yeah, so cool though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, th- there's 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 just a, like a talent to that. Yes, yes, exactly. So unfortunately, uh, Tadanari Okamoto actually died uh, during the production of this. He he did not finish it. So it was finished by another director who was his friend, uh, his friend who was also a protege of Osama Tezuka, who, again, like, he was the anime boy, and this guy, uh, Kihachiro Kawamoto, was not the anime boy. Mm -hmm. Like, he might have worked with Tezuka, but he is actually most well known as a puppet designer 
as a creator of short films uh, using models and cutouts and all kinds of stuff. Okay. So he was also very, very experimental. Yeah. Tezuka did... Um... Astro Boy. Yeah. And uh, Kim of the White Lion. Yeah. And all that. All mm-hmm. that good stuff. Um, so then, there also, though, the lead of animation on the project... Um, this the, the first one I found way more information. It's way more interesting in my opinion. Was uh, Reiko Okuyama, who uh, she actually worked for on several pretty pretty big uh, like pivotal anime movies or well Japanese animation movies, including The Tale of the White Serpent, which directly influenced uh, uh, Hayao Miyazaki, Miyazaki later on. Yeah. And also what was exported to the U.S. as Alakazam the Great. Um, and she, she, she did, she did a bunch of stuff. Like she did, she was very, had a very respectable career in animation, which, uh, I think it's, it's pretty cool to, to highlight that because I mean, most of the people that you hear about from the sixties and seventies who were working in Japanese animation are men. Yes. And, you know, even if, you know, a lot of the people behind the scenes, like a lot of the people actually doing the animation might've been women, mm-hmm. like you don't hear about like prominent women in animation. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so we stand. So uh, and then the I'll just go ahead and cover because then we can talk about differences and such. Yeah. The 2003 version, um, which we didn't even know that this existed. This did not come up on the list. This only came up because the link to the earlier film on that is on archive.org also has this version, and they specifically list in the archive.org listing that the 2003 version is much more obscure uh and that like it's harder to find and there's not that much information about it so we're really lucky that both of these are up here you know subtitled the the main thing that i found is that this one was directed by uh setsuko shibuichi who she has like zero information on the english internet outside of her filmography but She's been working since the early 70s in animation, um, and she's worked, like, there are huge gaps if you go on, like, uh, Annie List or, like, My Anime List or anything like that. There are huge gaps in her career where, for, like, 10 years, she doesn't have any credits. And I don't know, maybe that's just, like, you know, she has credits, but, like, they just haven't been added on the English side of the internet. But... Uh, she has been working as recently as the anime adaptation of Black Clover back in 2017 as an animator. So she's still around. She's doing stuff. But this is what this this 2003 adaptation of the Restaurant of Many Orders is what we know her for. So you want to talk about these movies? They're... Oh, do I? Okay. So oh, so where, where, man, do, where do we even start? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I gotta, I gotta I guess, resituate. I guess we can talk about what the story's about. Okay, yeah, that because so, they both fairly closely follow the story. Yeah, and so like if we're going based on the original, the translation of the original story, um, it's two men who are hunting in the woods, who are who have a guide, yep, a local guide, and two hunting dogs. And then... And they note that the guide, like, is actually a professional hunter, which I think implies that these guys aren't. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, like, they're doing they're, sport hunting. There are a few, like, references to that yeah. concept. So, uh, they... Their dogs die? That's what it... it just, I mean... One sentence, the, and then their dogs die. Uh, the, and then... Okay. Um... <laughs> They are hungry, yep. and they are lost deep in the woods. Their guide is, like, too far ahead of them. They can't find him. And then they stumble upon a restaurant in the deep woods. Yep. And they go into the restaurant, and it is a restaurant of many orders. Yep. And it's just, it's basically the back rooms, but 100 years. No, <laughs> no. no. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically it without spoiling anything. And, I like, the short story... And both of the films are so short that I kind of don't want to spoil them. It's going to be hard to talk about it not so, not yeah. spoiling anything. So, right, okay, right now, 
if that sounds interesting and if you want to see especially with the first one some really really unique animation um but also two very different takes on the same source material go pause go down to the description watch them and or read the story and then come back because we are going to start spoiling we're things. gonna have to we're, we, I, we pretty much have we, to. We, we pretty, it's 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 only 20 minutes yeah so so okay so um do you want me to continue on with yeah okay yeah, so, so come to find out uh it so while, while they're in the restaurant they, they 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 take the concept of the restaurant of many orders they they misunderstand it to be a restaurant in which the restaurant has many orders that they have to serve. Yes. There are lots of people. Yes. Um, and they go through this series of tasks that they must perform in order to get to the end, the, the like, what they think will be the seating, you know? Right. And so they're, the whole time they're like, oh, there must be some fancy people yep. here. Like, they're... They, they, aristocracy. Yeah, they feel like, oh, wow, we're about to meet some, like, kings and queens and shit. Mm-hmm. And so, like, they're, con- they're going through, they're going through. And they, it's not until the final room that they realize that the restaurant of many orders has been orders that they have been ordered ordered to do do. like like, get rid of your gun take off your shoes rub this cream on your face like (laughs) sprinkle salt on yourself and so that's when they're like oh wait a minute like um and so then we are treated to what i assume you would like to talk about uh, the ending yeah uh so yeah so then you find out that haha spoilers but bring it all around of last week it's cats <laughs> it's there, always cats there's there's some which i did not know when i picked this oh i know i i was like oh that looks really cool like the animation yeah and that's why i picked it but it came back around um the entities that are ordering them to basically prepare themselves for being cooked and eaten are giant cats <laughs> and so at the last minute uh their their dogs suddenly are not dead and burst onto the scene and the cats like are scared off and the restaurant disappears all of a sudden and then the professional hunter shows up and is like oh by the way here's some food so that you're not hungry and and then it ends with saying that um they went back to the city uh, but their faces never recovered from being crinkly, which in one of the adaptations of the film, which actually I think it was kind of in both of them, it interprets that as they now basically look like they have whiskers. Yeah, that's I. How, that's what I. Took okay, it as. so like I did not understand that. Right. I, I d- yeah, like the I guess maybe whiskers. Mm-hmm. Like the way that it says it in the translation is that their face looked like crinkled paper. Right. Right. Which. Like, the way one of the animations did it was, like, it's almost like their faces started sagging. Yes. And yes. were, like, wrinkled. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I I, I, actually wish we had looked at the actual Japanese mm-hmm. and looked at the kanji. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How it's of, described. Like, how it's described. Yeah. Because that is probably the, the, the one thing about these, mo- other than the dogs just showing back up. <laughs> yes. That really confused me. I was just, like. What is this trying to tell me? Right. That's why I was like, so I feel like it's a moral story. It's don't, <laughs> don't go into strange buildings or I, you're or never you, going to be the same. Or your face is going to get wrinkly. It's, it's uh, yeah, odd. It's, it's really, odd. really strange. So I feel like there might, there might be a like cultural thing mm-hmm. that I'm missing. Right. Like, because there in Japanese there are definitely say I mean obviously in every uh, language yeah, yeah. there are sayings like yeah that don't make sense in in other languages like in Japanese like if you have a blue face that means you're sick mm-hmm. but that's why that emoji exists and mm-hmm. like that's why like in anime their the p- characters faces often will go blue it it it's it's because of an it's saying right, like right. but the literal saying is blue face which yeah in english like it doesn't we translate we, we, we yeah. don't know what that means right so i'm wondering if there's something like that Maybe. at play here like, like the crinkly, like face, a crinkly thing. face it could like, be or a wrinkled i'm i'm not sure yeah like wrinkled r- paper you know right so uh, that that's the the one thing that i want to say that i i don't know like what this is <laughs> okay hold on i literally okay when i pulled up kenji miyazawa mm-hmm. i i was like 
th- there there is a piece of information here that I was like, why is that? Why does that feel like it's important? He was a vegetarian. This is him being an angry vegetarian <laughs> and saying, was he really? Yeah. So, okay, that makes sense then. Because, so when he wrote this, I, I mean, obviously this is me putting intent on him, mm-hmm. but that that could lend to the interpretation that as a vegetarian, this is him saying, you shouldn't sport hunt. You should only, like, if if you're going to consume animals, or if you're going to hunt animals, it should be for food, mm-hmm. you know? Because at the end, the guy brings them dumplings, which, yeah. I mean, the implication there would be they're probably meat. I mean, they yeah. might not be, yeah. but, but so this is him saying like, you shouldn't do that or you're going to end yeah. up getting eaten. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think you can definitely interpret that, it that way. I also Breaking think news. that, I also <laughs> think that like, there is some projection probably going oh, on Oh, I mean, here. obviously. Because like, I mean, full disclosure, like we're vegetarian. What? So. <laughs> no. We have been for almost a decade. Yeah. So, so I, I, yeah, I mean. I could definitely see I'm that, saying, and I like, like I love that interpretation. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of like um, how you know some people like not some people like I think it is a commonly held belief that the reason that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the way that it is is because it is simulating what it would be like for a human to experience a slaughterhouse. Mm. Like because the 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 last girl like basically. She's just here where all of the other humans have been killed Mm -hmm. and she's just being pursued relentlessly. Mm -hmm. And like, she knows she's going to die at this point. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And there's just so much like meat and stuff in that movie. Oh yeah. I I mean, I think that's part of why I don't like it. That's fair. So it's also stupid. Okay. (laughs) No, I, you're going to, you're going to, people are going to unsubscribe. That was, that was a joke. I'm joking. It was a joke. Um, it was just to rile you up. I, I, (laughs) It's fine. I, I know. I know you don't like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I'd give it a try again. I could. I could see it being something like that, where his his like vegetarianism informed, you know, yeah. making the two main characters hunters. I mean, it could be who are implied to be like, incompetent. Incompetent. At, yeah. At at hunting, yeah. and not just at hunting, but assuming like, ho ho, they must want us here because. They're saying like, "Ooh, we're gonna be big time aristocrats." But you know? there's, but there's also at the end, they're like, "Oh, we'll just go buy some game birds." Yes. To like make it seem like we. Like we actually. Yeah. 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 So well, anyway. Anyway. Um, so about the the movies themselves, because that's basically that's basically the entire story. Yeah. And yeah. both of the movies basically follow that, but the first one takes some liberties that I think are really interesting. Yeah. So I mean. I personally, between the translated short story the and the two versions, I absolutely prefer the first one. Yes. Like, yeah. it was just mind-boggling in the way that it was animated. And I, I just, I was, I feel like that one has stuck with me Definitely. so much more than the other two. Oh, absolutely. Um, though... I will also say, we watched that one first, mm-hmm. and I had your first impression. No clue what was going on. Yeah. It was very confusing. Which we should say, well, why it was so confusing? Because it there's no dialogue. There's no dialogue at all. There's there are the signs, the the orders which yeah. they receive. Yeah. And there's sound, and I think there's a little bit of music. Yeah. But there's absolutely no dialogue, which is. So, just, I mean, wow! In yeah. anything animated, to not have—I mm-hmm. mean, it's you know, it's like those like uh, those Pixar shorts, you know how kind, yeah, it was kind of like that, but longer. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just so like it, for the atmosphere of Halloween and like this season, yes. it just it just captured that creepy, like suspect, like. Mm-hmm strange and really just odd yeah atmosphere and, well, and there there are like entire there, there's basically an entire sequence that's added to this that's not in the original story mm-hmm. where like they're going through the rooms and each of the rooms has a placard that has an order on it and they're doing the things mm-hmm. but then they end up um in this hallway that's like 
either full of mirrors or like Mm -hmm. has like portals because they're like looping back and forth yeah i mean it was and all these like stained glass windows and then one of them opens a door and almost just falls into an abyss yeah out of nowhere and then and then the ending too is like it's not completely different but basically instead of getting stopped at the last room and the cats trying to get them to come in they actually go into this like underground coliseum that has a table set up for them and they go and they sit and then there's like these like ooh like sexy ladies coming up and like doing a dance and everything and then boom they just turn into cats yeah it's it's crazy sexy cat ladies sexy cat ladies who want to eat them yeah which that is absolutely something that i know some of our viewers will be into (laughs) (laughs) i'm not judging i'm just saying like but yeah that the the first one by far like no comparison it's wild it's it's wild it's wacky it's strange it's unique and it's it blows the other two out of the water Mm -hmm. however the other the 2003 version is almost essential Mm -hmm. if you want to understand what in all is happening in the first one so the 2003 one I really like, um, I like both of them, obviously, but I like the 2003 one because it's more of a direct adaptation in that it seemed like all of the dialogue in it was basically lifted directly from the story. That's what I thought as well. It It, felt that way. Right? Yeah. So I don't know if it's like literal word for word, but that was the sense that I got was that if it wasn't like literal word for word, then it was still, you know, basically all of the dialogue was included in some capacity. Yeah. It it, it felt much more true to the original. Right. The thing that I really like about this one over the other one, though, is that the original story, it's kind of hard to get a sense, like, is it supposed to be creepy? Is it... Because it's kind of dry. It's dry. But I don't know if that's the fault of the translation. Of course. That's totally fair. The first movie is definitely creepy. Oh, God. Yeah, it's... it's It fits the scary season yes. really well. I love the 2003 version because mm-hmm. it is goofy. It's so goofy. It is so goofy. It's so goofy. It, like, leans into these guys just being a pair of, like, bumbling idiots. And the cats, instead of coming all the way at the end, like, there is a, basically a, a, a ghost cat, like, following them the entire time. Mm-hmm. And it is great. It's, I love it. It's very it's so It's very funny. fun. It's more like kid-friendly kind of family like Mm -hmm. it's it's goofy it's it's funny it's silly it's super colorful it's very colorful it's it it definitely gives a vibe more akin to what like a children's story animated right feels like yeah and the cats in this are oh my gosh so fun because they because again there's no dialogue in the first one so in this one you actually get to hear the cats talking to them yeah oh it's it's, great it's so funny yeah um so yeah, I, I that's the thing is like I really enjoyed both of them. I do too. For different I, reasons. For different reasons because they're completely different. Mm-hmm. I did prefer the first one simply because it's just so weird. I, I think know? I do too because it's so unique. But I I feel like they they complement each other so well that right. there's no reason not to watch them both. Plus, I no. mean, they're like 20 minutes. Like, and I mean, they're both in the exact same place. Yeah, like, so it's not. I, I'm gonna link it. It's so. not difficult to mm-hmm. watch both of them. Um, and I, like, I don't know, like, I don't know which would I say watch first, you know, like, right. I don't really know, like. Right. So something about that too, though, is that in doing, so I found these because the 90s version was the one that was listed in that list. Again, same list. Sa- same list as Alien vs. Ninja <laughs> and uh, Ghost Cat and the Mysterious Shamsen. Um But in, after we watched both of these. And I was reading about the story and Kenji Miyazawa. I did not know there are other multiple other versions of this, including a live action 1958 black and white version. Oh, you know, I'm there. And I'm like, okay, so we got to we got to see what's going on with that. That sounds cool. Right. Yeah. So but I I found that like too close to recording to be like, Mm -hmm. let's talk about like five movies in one episode, (laughs) you know. Well, there's always, there's always Halloween. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, November, we could just keep doing horror movies if we wanted. Why not? Like, why not? You know? Yeah. Because there's always a dearth of Christmas movies, uh, Japanese Christmas movies. And I think a lot of them 
a lot of the ones that I'm aware of, we have already covered. Mm -hmm. So honestly, we could just keep doing Halloween. Cool. Yeah. Did leave a uh, what should they leave? Santa hat. Leave a Santa hat if you want more spooky horror movies in November. Yep. Because honestly, I'm down to just do another month of this. Yeah. I know we fell behind this month, but <laughs> life life happens. It's yeah. It happens, you know. This is just for fun. So. Exactly. And if you're not having fun, you can get the hell out. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Uh... I'm j uh, if you're not having fun, you're not listening at this point. I, I, I don't feel well, like... Well, I certainly hope you're not. Like, yeah. Don't listen if you're not having fun. Yeah. Like, just, just, Come on. Yeah. Go... Enjoy your life. Yeah. Like, touch some grass. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't even mean that. Like, I almost said it... eat a leaf, <laughs> so I'm glad that I... <laughs> well, as a vegetarian, I can highly recommend it. Um, <laughs> eating leaves. Okay, is there anything else more that we want to say about either of these? I don't. I don't think so. It's so tough because they're it's like they're. It's not. There's not a lot. Mm -mm. I, I mean, you summarized the story in like two minutes. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, like just go watch them. I mm -hmm. mean, we mainly. I wanted. Okay, I wanted to cover these because the animation in the first one looked oh, really cool. Wow, so cool. After we watched them. I wanted to cover them because I was like, I've never heard of this before and I want other people to know about this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not covering it to be like, let's deeply analyze the, you know, the morality of, the, yeah, no, I, I f frankly, I just, I just want y'all to know about this. And for, for those of y'all who enjoy hearing us talk for like half an hour a week, here you go. Also happy Halloween. Happy that, Halloween. That's coming up. Uh, if this goes up at the right time tomorrow or this might just go up on Halloween. I don't know. I don't know. Leave a jack-o'-lantern emoji. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's just do do the thing. Say the say the. Yeah. So if you're on YouTube, we are also on Spotify. If you're on Spotify, we're also on YouTube. There's a bunch of stuff on YouTube that you've never even seen or heard of. Um, it's a really big website. They, you know, billions of hours of footage uploaded every second <laughs> there's tons on there that you've never heard of uh, there's stuff on there i've never heard of uh, <laughs> so anyway thank you all for listening this far if you did unironically leave a jack-o-lantern emoji if you got this far <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for listening and we will see you in november maybe with more horror movies yeah yeah